Welcome back, everybody, to the 20th chapter to the magnificent book of Revelation. And here we are dealing with the binding up of Satan, Satan being freed and then doomed after the millennial reign, the judgment at the throne of God. Yes, the white throne judgment. This chapter for 15 verses is power packed and infused with the essence of God's glory, as is all of his word. So let's come together as we are privileged to do so at this hour and just praise the Lord our God for the victory he has promised us that we can engage and look forward onto by the faith and perfect hope he's given us in Christ Jesus and his Holy Spirit thereof, the revealer of all truth, that we may be comforted, encouraged by these very words here today. Amen? Amen. So let's go forward now without wasting any more time Chapter 20, verse 1 states, And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the abyss, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he should not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark upon their forehead and upon their hand, and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Verse 5, The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him for a thousand years. Verse 7 now. And when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Let's raise an amen and a hallelujah to all these truths we've just read in the first ten verses, because this is just powerful. Let's go forward now with the next four. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne in him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds." 14. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. This concludes the 20th chapter to this book of Revelation. Nonetheless, we are going to do some commentary as always. For it is a great thing to be able to expand upon the word of the Lord 
only through and by way of his spirit, his breath of life in us. But nonetheless, we are here using for this Revelation study the NASB or New American Standard Bible, but this is a special edition from the 80s, the 1980s, titled The Open Bible. And it's very special and dear to my heart, for there are many excellent truths within it that expand upon the scriptures, that, that, that uh, match scripture with scripture. With that being said, there's one here for verses 11 through 15 titled, The Judgment of the Wicked. And instead of me speaking and commentating as usual by way of our Lord's Spirit, I would love to share this with everyone here if we would have ears to hear and an open heart and the time to receive these truths. So here we go. The judgment of the wicked according to the word of God states this. The great white throne judgment will follow the thousand year reign of Christ. This is the final judgment and only the wicked dead are to be judged. According to Revelation 20, verse 5, the believers were resurrected a thousand years before this judgment, and their works were judged at the judgment seat of Christ. That can be referenced in 2 Corinthians 5.10 as well. Point 1. At this judgment, the wicked dead will seek a hiding place from the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, the judge, but there is no hiding place. Point 2. At this judgment, the dead, the great, and the small will stand before God. But the greatness of the great, sorry, but yeah, but the greatness of the great will be of no value. For it is written, there is none who does good, there is not even one. Romans 3.12 Point 3. At this judgment, the book of life will be opened. Why the book of life? If there are no saved at this judgment. The wicked will be shown that God in his mercy provided space for them in the book of life, so that they are without excuse. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 through 20 can reference that truth as well. Point 4. At this judgment, the dead will be judged according to their deeds. God is a just God, and since there are degrees of punishment in hell, some will be punished more than others. Luke chapter 12 Verses 42 and 48. Verse 5. At this judgment, there will be no acquittal, no higher court to which the lost may appeal. It is lost and lost forever. It is damned to all eternity, and that without hope. There is a Hades. Luke 16, verses 19 through 31 declare that. And in Hades, there is no hope, no sympathy, no love. Even the love of God does not extend beyond the portals of Hades. And this is a beautiful truth. Amen. This concludes the judgment of the wicked and all the truths thereof that correlate with such. And there's many more as we go through the books of the prophets of old, the Old Testament, as well as many other truths of Christ through the Gospels and through our brother Paul, through our brother Peter, through our brother John, and thus forth and so on. It's a beautiful thing the Lord gives us his word that we can cherish it as 100% inerrant, accurate perfection. And this is truth to our souls. This is spirit and life. For the Lord himself declared, my words are spirit and truth. And Peter declared when the many disciples left and fled Jesus and stopped following him because he declared to eat of his flesh and to drink of his blood, for which is the bread of life. And, and they all left him. But, and then Jesus spoke unto the disciples that remained, the twelve, and said, Are you two to betray and leave me as well? And Peter's the one that spoke up, as which was common. And at that time frame, Peter, always speaking up boldly and standing out, declared, he said, Lord, where would we go? For none other than you, no others besides you, you are the one, Jesus, with the words of life. He says that you are the one who speaks the words of eternal life. And Jesus tells us that. His word is spirit and truth. And his word is life itself. Eternal life even. And of course Christ is greater than the written word. But yet the written word is so important to our Father God. That it reveals his will. It reveals his character. It reveals who he is to us. And it reveals who we are to him. But as well our fallen and sinful nature that we must repent of. And turn to him from that we may bask in his presence and walk in the kingdom of his light and his truth in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. I know that was a lot there, but nonetheless, there's never enough expanding upon the beauty of God's word and it's in, in its perfect accuracy and inerrancy. So peace, grace, and mercy be with all those in Christ Jesus. We pray here that these have been a blessing to you and that you continue to grow in your faith, that you continue to grow in spirit and in truth, and that you continue to surrender and let the Lord be the leader, the guider, the king, and the Lord of your heart and your life because it's very important because he knows best and he is able to save us from the lake of fire and hell itself. So... We'll see you in chapter 21, Lord willing. Until then, amen.